Um, you know, I start every video, I think, with hello, everyone, then. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to hop on and talk about something I've been wanting to talk about for a while. It actually stems from an earlier uh, incident, which I'll, which I'll come to at the end of this, uh, this video. Um, the, uh, yesterday, I think it was yesterday, or the day before yesterday, possibly, uh, Norwich Council released a statement saying trans women are women, trans men are men, non-binary people are non-binary. So, which, which basically means uh, men are women, women are men, and non-binary people are non-binary. So, um, so anyway, uh, I thought I would, uh, someone did a very good thread, a friend of mine, who uh, I would like to, I'd, li I'd like to read out their thoughts now, um, because it kind of, it kind of sums it up. Uh, it's directed towards Norwich City Council. So let me just read this out, and then I'll get back to, um, I'll get back to talking normally at the end of it. Uh, Norwich City Council has unanimously adopted the motion that trans rights are human rights, trans women are women, trans men are men, and non-binary people are non-binary. So we want to ask councillors responsible for specific services some questions about the implications of this policy. And I'd like to thank Norwich Women's Rights Group for permission to share the following thread. So, councillor Adam Giles leading on sport and leisure. If trans women are women, does that mean that the women only swimming session in the council run Riverside Leisure Centre is now open to anyone who says they are a woman uh, and it doesn't matter if Muslim women and others stay away as a result. Councillor Beth Jones leading on safeguarding adults and children tackling domestic violence. If trans women are women, does that mean that severely disabled women should have intimate care from anyone who says they're a woman? Does it mean that domestic violence shelters for women should admit anyone who says they are a woman? Councillor Alan Waters, uh, organizational development and HR. If trans women are women, how can you support the legal and human rights of council employees who do not agree with this faith-based system and speak out for women's rights and sex, single sex services? How can you protect those people from harassment and abuse? Councillor Alan Waters, organizational development and HR lead. If trans women are women, would or could you stop a late transitioning trans woman who benefited from a career as a white man from being used as a comparator in a sex discrimination case? Councillor Gail Harris, homelessness and housing allocation. You spoke movingly about the safety of women and girls in Norwich after the Sarah Everard murder. If trans women are women and anyone who says they're a woman can use single sex spaces for vulnerable women, how can you keep women safe from predatory men who will use any loophole to access potential victims? Councillor Kate Oliver, leading on rough sleepers. If trans women are women, does that mean that the council would support housing vulnerable homeless women in emergency dormitory accommodation alongside anyone who says they are a woman? Councillor Paul Kendrick, legal services lead. If trans women are women, how do you balance the legal rights of different groups under the Equality Act? Did you ensure that this motion was subject to an equality impact assessment? Did you ensure it complies with the law which enshrines women's rights to single sex spaces and requires the rights of protected characteristics to be balanced? When you say trans women are women as a council, you are committing to including that principle in your policies and programs. If trans women are women, the legal rights of women, girls and lesbians are crushed. It's easy to spout mantras feel righteous and gain adulation from loud activists. But those words have profound consequences for women and girls, even within the council's narrow remit. We call on the council to respond to these questions and confirm their support for women's sex-based rights and services where they matter. That's the thread. I want to add that I sense, hold on a sec, let me just pull them up here. Uh, I, I sense this bloke's uh, influence in, in these decisions. Um, this is a young white man who has managed to groom his fellow councillors into adopting legally hazardous and morally indefensible positions that will put women and children in danger. He is also, I remember, the person who said that left-wing feminists were putting razor blades behind stickers in Norwich. 
I know the people who put those stickers up. And as usual, they are mostly left-wing women with a proud history of left-wing activism behind them. Councillor Cat is yet another shameless opportunist brought to prominence by this absurd, harmful cult, and he is spreading a disgusting lie that could end up getting people hurt. In this effort, he has had collaborators in the journalist Maya Derrick and her editor Richard Porritt, who further spread his lies in one of my local papers, the Norwich Evening News. A man like Councillor Cat should be nowhere near the levers of power, even if he's just deciding what day the bins get picked up. I hope the good people of Norwich will write and demand that he either apologise to the women he's defamed or resign. I also urge everyone to demand answers to the, to the above questions and any others you can think of arising from the equally absurd lie that males are females, females are males, and non-binary people are anything except extremely entitled middle-class white people with no real problems in their lives. That's it. Thank you very much. And um, uh, yeah, I will include all the information on how to get in touch with people and how to complain um, in the uh, bit under this, this video. So I'll see you next time for another uh, uh, Criswell Predicts. That's an in-joke for people who like the film uh, um, Plan 9 from Outer Space. All right, bye.